In my last few videos, political videos, I've suggested that the only politics that really matter are from those who have power or those who have a chance of getting power. Well, I wasn't altogether correct with that. The people who vote matter just as much, honestly. And I, I, I was just really trying to step away from things. The problem is that only one side has been really open to critique in any sort of way. Not always open, but at least more open than the other side. The way that you can judge this is how much a particular side critiques themselves. They hear things from the other side and then say, hey, maybe we should look into this. Maybe we should be critique critiquing this. And so you don't see the right wing critiquing the right wing. You just so rarely see it, you might as well say they just don't do it. But you see plenty of people on the left critiquing the left, especially on places like YouTube. This is by design. This is the way the right wing wants things to be. They're very happy about that. When Trump first got elected, I was a mess. I had a lot of suicidal ideations. I, I was just a mess. I knew some of what we would be in for, most of it being what was going to happen to our culture. And no, this isn't simply about a right-winger being in office. I mean, sure, I would have been a little disgruntled if any right-winger, if any, well, Republican, got put in office. But this is different. This is altogether different. This is specifically about what the bullying culture of Trump was going to bring about. This is about Trump's pandering to religious zealots and people who want to take away LGBT rights in the name of religious freedom. This is about pandering to the messages of white nationalists, and pandering to the misogynistic side of the men's rights movement. Myself and millions of others could see this as well. And we've been constantly told, oh, just wait, give Trump a chance. And we were told some of the worst messaging out there, that if we don't support Trump, that we want the country to fail, or that we hate the country. So for three years of this shitty presidency, I tried to be open-minded. I tried really hard to be balanced. I tried to give right-wing viewpoints, or particularly Republican viewpoints, a chance. And where did it get me? Well, it got me a bunch of subs from right-wingers. It got me considering the views of the far right, and even occasionally pushing their messages. And it got me critiquing the left to the degree that I might as well have been a Republican. All in the name of trying to be open-minded. I regret it terribly. I certainly lost a lot of allies. I was essentially doing the same thing as Dave Rubin or Tim Pool, except I wasn't getting paid for it. And what have we seen from this presidency? Well, we've seen everything that people like me were saying was going to happen. Lots of people equating loyalty to Trump with loyalty to the country. People continuing the bullshit narrative that if you don't support Trump, then you don't support the country. That if you don't want Trump to implement the things that his administration wants, that you want the country to fail. People pushing the notion that to be a real patriot, you have to be religious, and you have to promote the country's traditions. That if you're not proud of the history of this country, that you actually hate it. But Trump wants to drain the swamp. He wants to end the deep state. He's the Republican version of JFK. Q drops, QAnon, where we go one, we go all, mega. Talk about a cult following. This shit is insane. No, Trump doesn't care about corruption unless it gets in the way of his bottom line or his power. He doesn't give a flying fuck about most of this country. You know, let's, let's do a hypothetical, okay? Let's say Trump actually did want to drain the swamp. He's wanting to replace it with raw sewage. So, I mean, what's, you know? He's the most corrupt president we've had in a hundred years. And no matter how many thousands of lies that are well documented, no matter how many of those things get shown to his to Trump's cult followers, they strongly express that it's, well, it's fake news or it doesn't really matter. And neither do any of Trump's corrupt business dealings. 
The Trump cultists certainly don't see anything at all wrong with his quid pro pro in the Ukraine. With Trump, everything is permissible as long as you get to own the libs. We've seen the rise of religious zealotry. We've seen the rise of white nationalist talking points. We've seen the rise of anti-LGBT rhetoric. We've seen the rise in misogyny. And yet, three years, even three years into this presidency, and I'm still supposed to be somehow open-minded to all this shit. I'm still supposed to give Trump a chance. And I'm still supposed to constantly critique and be the most concerned about what the left is doing. While the right wing never questions anything about even its most extreme sides, unless they're violent. And then they don't critique the ideology that those violent people had. They just critique the person, the individuals who did violent things. They don't critique the talking points that those violent people stewed about that made them violent in the first place. So now I'm sort of back to where I was when Trump first got elected, minus the suicidal ideations, thankfully. I'm not a total mess, either. But as far as my, my viewpoints of the right wing in the United States, yeah, I'm kind of back to that again. For three years, I tried to be more open-minded about this shit. I tried to give this stuff a chance. I tried to consider the viewpoints of these, these right-wing zealots. I'm done being open-minded about this presidency. I'm done being like Tim Pool or Dave Rubin. I'm done with doing Republicans' work for them. I'm done with critiquing high school kids and college students. I'm done with critiquing the political side of Hollywood. I'm done with shutting my mouth about the bigotry and hate that's continually permeating from the right wing in the United States. No, I don't really care that much anymore about drag queens reading to kids. That doesn't hurt kids on anywhere near the same level as teaching kids about burning hell for eternity for not following religious dogma. But you don't see me pushing to make that kind of mental child abuse illegal as much as I'd like to. Yes, I think that teaching kids about burning in hell for eternity for not following religious dogma, I think that's child abuse. Flat out. Straight up. No, I don't care if you think that white nationalist talking points aren't hateful if they say it nicely. No, I don't care if you think that saying that LGBT are degenerates isn't hateful. I don't care if you don't think it's hateful. It's hateful, sorry. I don't care if you think that messages that degrade half the population are actually full of love because you think you have God on your side. Yeah, I don't care if you think that's not hateful. I don't care if you think those sorts of hateful things are conservative values that you feel should be given platforms everywhere. That kind of shit doesn't deserve a popular platform. Sure, you can believe in that kind of hateful shit, but if you try to announce it to the world, yeah, there's going to be consequences for it. I don't care if you lose your freedom of speech to state those hateful things on popular social media platforms. I don't care anymore. You made your bed, now lie in it. For close to 30 years, you kept that shit to yourself. And that's why there wasn't much of a pushback for it before. And now you somehow expect to be given a platform everywhere for that kind of shit. Nope. Sorry. No, I, I don't believe in freedom of speech on popular tech platforms. If you want to spew viewpoints that degrade people for things they have no control over, you should expect to be censored everywhere but the platforms that are okay with that kind of hate. But my religion is about love! Bullshit. But, but my beliefs, I just believe in an ethno-state, that's not hateful. Uh, yes it is. Look, you can have your, your daily stormers and your bit shoots and your gabs and your uh, uh, storm fronts. You can have all those to state any of that kind of view that you want. They're not going to stop you there. Go ahead. Go congregate on those types of platforms. You can state anything you want there. But leave the rest of us alone with your hateful messaging. I'm done giving a shit about the feelings of people on the right and the far right. I I'm just done. Sorry. Let's see how you like it when the left stops caring about your feelings. You, you've, you've made it clear you don't care about the left's feelings, so why should they care about yours? 
Poor you. You can't spew hateful ideologies on popular tech platforms. Yes, let me get up my miniature violin, right? I'm done considering those types of viewpoints. I'm not playing the role of Dave Rubin or Tim Pool anymore. Have a nice day.